G'day everyone, I'm Dan from Sydney Water. Just gonna run you through a little project I've been working on for a few years on the Cooks River, which has already been mentioned. It's in Sydney Water talk, it's an asset renewal, but in real life, it's a river reconstruction. That is the Cooks River. Sydney Water owns the upper half of the main channel of the Cooks River. Um, we have airport, CBD, Penryn Estuary that Mia was talking about, Alexandra Canal. It looks like this. It looks a bit like a drain. It's a bit of a sad river with poor old Cooks. Um, a lot of people probably consider it one of the most polluted waterways in Australia. Um, in the 1940s, it was realigned or straightened, concrete lined. So there goes your riparian zone. Um, basically to get floodwaters away fast and to flush pollutants away from people out into Botany Bay. Um, and luckily for us at Sydney Water, we get to own the concrete bit, um, but the concrete's falling apart. It's getting old, um, the salt's got into it, and um, a few s spots are starting to fall apart, like that example I've got up there, and um, it needs renewal. But rather than just rush back in and re-concrete, a few of us said, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We could probably do something better. Um, so there was 1.1 kilometres identified for renewal. Um, there's some other bits and pieces about Cooks there. The community around the Cooks River, I'm going to go out there and say, are the most engaged community with their river anywhere. Like, I don't live there, <laughs> but they so are. They're here today in their own time. <laughs> See, they're everywhere. You can't avoid them. <laughs> so that helps. That really helps because they're on board right from the start. Um, it's really, really highly urbanised. There's hardly any remnant vegetation left at all. So talking about reference sites, it's a struggle on the Cooks River. There's one or two little spots here and there. Um, and there's real governance issues. Like there's 13 local councils and you're trying to manage a waterway, you're trying to manage water quality, you're trying to manage weeds. Um, yeah, it, it makes it really difficult. And us, Sydney Water, trying to come in and do things. These are the three sites that we selected for renewal slash naturalisation, reconstruction. This is basically what it is. You go from your traditional concrete trapezoid channel, the, the drain, and take out the concrete edges, lay them back to a more natural slope, stabilise them with sandstone and native plants, and walk away. No, you don't walk away. <laughs> Um, in real life, it looks like that. So um, that, this is one of the three sites that um, has, they're all just being finished. So this one's finished, the last one is still in construction. So this is happening right now. Um, so there's the trapezoid channel, there's a car engine body, just to give you a bit of <laughs> a feel for a normal day on the cooks. <laughs> and so you can see we've, we've laid that bank back um, it's all interplanted with the sandstone and then the, the native planting goes way up into the riparian zone as well, um, looking much better. As far as um, vegetation communities goes, when you're on the Cooks River, you use the Bible, um, which is the, the missing jigsaw pieces by Benson et al. And it sort of maps out what the communities would have been <laughs> if there weren't houses and roads there now. And so you've got mostly clay shale based stuff with the sandstone coming in around Walleye Creek and a little bit of um, aeolian sands on the coast. Um, and for our project, we had over 80,000 plants and 45 different species, all provenance, whatever that means. Um, <laughs> don't go there. Um, Uh, our freshwater and brackish swamps is like on the lower bank to mid bank. The clay plain scrub forest is most of our vegetation and it's sort of um, low grasses and, and shrubs that we've used on the mid bank and then the overbank areas. The turpentine ironbark stuff is just selected trees. We weren't able to put a lot of big trees back next to the river because it's a, a flood problem. Um, we've got flooding problems now, we've got people developed way too close to the river so we can't put big trees in because they collect debris in big floods and make flooding worse. And then coastal salt marsh we've brought back in where we can, sometimes on the lower bank which will just let that naturally recruit and then there's some 
benches that we've created as well. Uh, this is how you do it. You get in there and you rip that stuff out. Which is, um, it, this is significant for Sydney Water because for 126 years we've done big concrete things. And this is the first time we've done a big unconcrete thing. <laughs> and um, so we're really excited about it. <laughs> Thank you. Excavate it right back. If the, if the soil is strong enough, you can leave some of it there. In most cases, we had to get rid of everything and just engineer the bank back up below the rock. And then rock and plant. Um, a few different photos. This is all the one site. Um, this is the next site down. So this is tidal here. So we'll, we will get some salt marsh recruiting into the bank there. And um, there's one of the salt marsh benches. And you'll notice the, the berm that we had to create at the front. And that's a permeable berm that will let those really high tides through to engage the salt marsh. But it's there to keep rubbish out because we're on the Cooks River. And the amount of rubbish, I was just there the other day, and every now and then the Cooks will have a day where it looks like you could walk across it. Um, so that, that berm is actually working really well. We had a, a really big flood about a month ago, and that salt marsh handled really well. It wasn't, I thought I was gonna turn up and it'd be under a foot of just debris. It was fine. Um, so that berm design's working well. That's one we created earlier, so. <laughs> That's, that's the lower site artist impression. <laughs> I promise it'll look like that. Um, I just wanted to quickly run through. Um, I haven't got time. There's some benefits, social nexus, biophilia, which is what people are talking a little bit about. Um, look it up. <laughs> and there's the freshwater wetland that was adjacent to one of the sites that we built as well. Thank you.